Hello and welcome to Animal Watch. And today we're asking the question, is it possible to train a Siberian Husky? We'll soon find out. The Siberian Husky, renowned as untrainable. Many people say he's an escape artist. He's destructive. He digs. He runs away. He kills everything he sees. He's independent and self-serving. And he's stupid. Today on Animal Watch, part one of Can You Train a Husky? We collaborate with renowned trainer Kamal Fernandez, who has 25 years worth of dog training experience. He is also a Crufts competitor, judge and steward. If anyone can answer this question, it's him. Combined with Annika's one-to-one -one daily existence with her husky cow, what will be the outcome? Watch and find out. If you've ever wanted a husky but opted for a golden retriever, Labrador or German Shepherd just because his reputation puts you off, then this episode is for you. We will put the husky to the test and find out if a husky is trainable and whether simply most people are just not up to the challenge. Most trainers will say that every dog in the world can be trained. It just needs different stimulus and methods to appeal to what they were bred to do. For example, here we have the famous Ninja Von Wolster, a well-known Siberian Husky and Instagram sensation. He is the ultimate example of a trained Husky and what they are capable of. His motivation was found and utilized. Also, a German Shepherd is bred to guard, herd and be extremely attentive. His motivation is that he will do most things you ask for a ball or food. So what happens when you get a husky who isn't food motivated or hates balls? You need to find out his motivation. So today we are using new puppy Cal L, a show line husky from Russia, alongside Kamal's wisdom and experience to see if it's possible to train a husky. Can we turn Cal L into another ninja. Kalel is a one-year-old showline husky and I would like to train him. These are my issues with him. He pulls a lot. He's predatory. I'm scared his prey drive will mean that I will never be able to let him off. He also has panic attacks, a type of agoraphobia when he is walked inside large halls, such as pets at home or in a busy road with lots of cars and people. He has many panic attacks and tries to climb up me. He also jumps on passing dogs, which is not polite. <laughs> on the plus side, he has incredible eye contact, a very soft mouth, no snapping, and he loves treats, which is great for training. It was very easy to train him to sit, give paw, stand, take a mark, and jump in and out of a car. So I know that he has exceptional intelligence and concentration for a husky. I'm just worried that the agoraphobia will wipe out his ability to be trained in noisy public places. Today is day one of meeting and working with top Crufts trainer Kamal Fernandez. So I'm really excited to find out what he thinks of Cal. Hi, Hi, I'm Annika. Hi, I'm Kamal. Nice to meet Hi. you. This, this is a boy. Yeah, this is Kalal. Boy, hello. So Kalal meets Kamal. Kamal. <laughs> Say that as a tongue twister. <laughs> Practically the same name. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kamal Fernandez, professional dog trainer and dog sports coach. My job is to help people get better relationships from their dogs using reinforcement-based methods. So Cal is um, a husky, a Siberian yep. husky, yep. show line. Mm -hmm. um, he's flown over from Russia. He's come from one of the top oh, kennels in the whole world. Special boy. Now, the biggest question comes up mm -hmm. is, can you train a husky? Huskies do have the reputation of being notoriously untrainable, but it's actually a little bit of a misconception because actually they're, the, they're, they're actually very trainable, but they just need a certain approach. They're incredibly clever and they do have breed specific challenges like being prey driven, which obviously if you don't put the relevant training and that can be really problematic. 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you a few things yeah, that I've noticed. It. Obviously, pulling. Yes. Oh, yeah. So he That's is breed characteristic. Yeah, yeah he's absolutely programmed to pull. If yeah. I put him on, you know, a bungee leash around mm -hmm. my waist and I attach a harness to him, he will jump so hard sure. to pull that yeah. I almost go flying. Yeah. He's incredibly prey driven. Yeah. When he's off the lead and he's running around, mm -hmm. he gets so happy that he's running yeah. that he completely forgets I'm there. He also has some weird fears when we're walking down the road. So okay. one of them initially was he didn't like people and strange dogs coming towards him. Okay. He would freeze. Yep. Okay. Now that's got better, but it's turned into something else. So right. now he goes to jump on the dog okay. and the dogs don't like this. Yep. And of course Absolutely. it's going to cause a fight. Yep. And another one is going down an alleyway, coming face to face with people. Okay. Let's break it down. The first thing to talk about is loose lead walking. Loose lead walking is a notoriously difficult skill to master, irrespective of the dog that you have and the breed that you have. The reason being is because it takes a lot of consistency. It takes an absolute amount, of, a massive amount of commitment to really, really achieve. So the way in which I choose to train dogs is using reinforcements or reinforcement. And I try to focus on teaching the dog what I want, as opposed to constantly highlighting what I don't want. A couple of things that you can consider. One is a no pull harness. The other thing that you can consider is a head collar. Um, Again, a head collar fits around the dog's muzzle and there's an attachment under the chin, which if the dog pulls into it, it turns the dog back to you. The head collar is something that you need to put the work in to teach them to accept. What the fatal mistake that people make is just putting it on the dog and take it out for a walk. And then the dog gets really, really stressed. They try to get it off their face. They can cause damage to themselves and nobody wants to see that. So you need to systematically condition the dog to accept it. The things that you've said about him approaching other dogs and people and his little phobias could all be tied in with his age. He's a year old and he will be in adolescence. Adolescence is a very notoriously challenging time for any dog irrespective of the breed because you have a hormone surge especially with male dogs. Again because I believe in reinforcement why I urge people to do in that challenging time is make sure that you don't take for granted when your dog's showing good behavior and that's something that people really often miss and if you can get him around really nice social um, well-balanced dogs. So we're going to start with some little recall exercises with him today to condition him that you are the most important thing in this world as opposed to bunnies and rabbits and squirrels etc. Now the critical thing with any dog training is to find the thing that the dog wants which is always the 64 million dollar question because some dogs may like food and some dogs might like toys some dogs might like things really abstract you know you've got to be a bit creative about foot reinforcement so the first thing I'm going to do is just get his attention with some food. So obviously he likes the food that I've got for him. Uh, I've got a mixture of some Pro Dog Raw soft treats, which are easy for him to eat and palatable, and also something a bit sneaky, a bit of meatball, okay? So we want to be thinking about really high value treats. So I've got his attention from that. And initially, all I'm going to do is just make a little noise. So now he's responding to that little noise. I'm going to substitute that and use his name, okay? Cal, yeah, super, touch the collar feed the dog. Now, I'm going to try, I've got a toy in my pocket, and I'm going to actually call him back this time. I'm going to play with him when he comes back. So I'm going to let him wander off. Cal! Good. Got my toy ready. Good. And oh, what's this? Get that one. Yeah! Super. Oh, gosh. He really, see how he really responds to that toy? That's great, because it means then we've got another thing to, um, good boy, to train him with. Good boy. So I'll let him win it. Oh! We strong, <laughs> good boy. So again, a misconception about the breed is they're not trainable. Yeah, we just got to find what floats their boat. Go get the sweet. Good boy. Cow. Good. Sit. Yes, get it. We good. So I just asked him to sit there that time, just to mix it up. Whoosh, good. We get. Oh, we get it. Good lad. Well done. Cow. Yes. Get it. Good. Nice. Good boy. And a big game. Oh, that was it. You're the winner. <laughs> Cal, come on, good. come on. Good. Yay, yes, good perfect. Boy. That was excellent. Excellent. Good boy. That was brilliant. Good brilliant. Boy. Good. If he makes that decision to come near me, I'm going to reward him. So I'm now going to head back. Good. Yes, good. So his job is to keep the slack out of the lead, okay? So I'm going to move somewhere else. So he's as if I'm a magnet. Yes, good boy. He's learning that if he lingers around me, yes, good. There's a possibility that I might feed him. So if I start walking off and I change direction, yes, good boy, he's going to get reinforced for um, lingering in my personal space, all right? So now I'm going to move off, good, and I've got my food in my hands, okay? I'm going to change direction on him, let him catch me up, yes, good boy. So I like head collars because they mean that I can um, control the dog's face and eyes. So we're going to start with how to teach the dog to accept a head collar. So at first I'm not even going to put it on, I'm not even going to clip it, okay? Good. Yes, good. So he put his nose in it. 
good. I'm putting a little bit of pressure there so he's getting the feel of it on his face and take it off. Good boy, all right? So he's gonna very quickly learn that when that head collar being on his face equates to rewards coming to him, yeah? Good boy, take it off. Okay, now I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna chance my arm and move this on a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna clip it on behind him. Clip the head collar on. See if we'll just, yes, good, walk forward with it on. Good, come in. Yes, good boy, nice, come in. Yes, good, so he's happy with that being on his face. Take it off him. Good boy, well done. Even for a show husky, he's very, very trainable. Um, I've trained several, and, and to be fair, they do tend to be biddable and they like food. He's a, he likes toys, which is again quite unique for um, for the type of dog that he is. Um, they do again. He's and he's quite. He wants to bring it back to you, which often what they want to do is rip it up and go away from you. Again, it's that little <laughs> bit of independence. He's actually quite personable. He wants to be near you. Yeah. He likes physical contact. So he's definitely trainable. So it was very good feedback from Kamal, and we had found Cal's motivation, a squeaky long rat to feed his prey drive. Whereas a German Shepherd or a Border Collie may be rewarded with food and a bull, the Siberian Husky responds very well to something which looks like a prey animal. So in this case, a long rat-like squeaker. For treats, a high-value treat is a necessity, not just dry biscuits that people feed their dog on every day. We used a combination of ProDog raw training treats in venison and black pudding flavour. And some stinky sausage from the shops. At home, a healthy raw diet is also necessary for optimal training with your dog and health. To combat Cal's pulling, I need to train him with a combination of eye contact, loose leash training, rewarded with treats and a toy every few attempts. This technique I'm hoping will distract him from other dogs on walks, also if I try luring him with food or the squeaky toy. I will attempt to get him used to a halty in case this needs to be used in combination with the food and toy training. To train him to go off leash, I will call him on a long line and reward with food and the toy. Later that day, I visited Natalie Lagstrom, renowned film wolf dog trainer who hosts weekly training classes near Hastings in the UK. We took Cal along just to see how he would react to being in a group of dogs and people. He had been very attentive while alone with Kamal, but would his agoraphobia and distracted personality come into play? We were soon to find out. Hi, I'm Natalie and I'm head of Watermere Wolves and Naturally Pets training. And uh, we're here today to have a little bit of fun in one of our training socialisation classes. So socialisation classes that are well supervised and well run are a perfect opportunity to work on teaching your dog good manners, which is important for every dog. That's how they avoid getting into fights and arguments and having bad experiences out and about. They need to be polite when they're interacting with other dogs. It's also really important that they know to listen to you around other dogs. So group classes are a brilliant way of getting in that practice, knowing those other dogs aren't going to come over and interfere with your training, gives you that opportunity to work on that one-to-one -one bond in a busy environment. All right, fantastic. Get a reward, get that watch, good dog, look at me, and then just try it on the move. So just literally a semicircle. Cal's attention span really timed out here in this group, and he started to pant, pull, and try and run in every direction possible. Sort of a mini meltdown. Walking without towing when there's distractions is a very, very important skill to really perfect in, in, in all of your dogs. At this point, I just want you to practice luring them through. Training him in a group was proving to be very hard, even with treats. You heard me say Coco. good boy there. Good boy, look. Yep. Coco, come on. This way, come on. Good boy. Calm He's overwhelmed by the dogs. I was going to say, he needs dogs. to calm and relax a little bit and settle. And the goal is to try and keep your dog focused on you and not interested in what I'm doing with the treats. Actually, he moved on quite nicely for you there. So the idea is you're going to be passing other dogs in the middle, like you would pass them on the pavement, okay? First time you guys go round, 
I want you to focus on keeping your dog looking at you as you go past. We're not going to stop and say hi. This time you can say hi. You're doing a nice job getting Karen to settle. And actually, if Diva, Diva doesn't come, actually, we won't say hello, not while he's towing. So what we're going to do is one person is going to work at the green cones and one person is going to work at the yellow cones. Cal, sit. Good boy. Take your time to get the sit. Good boy, Annika, Cal. Annika, so just don't walk away from him until you see Stay. that puppy's in a wait. Stay. Wait. And then back away together. Stay. Wait. Stay. And Come then up, go up, for up, it. Up, up. Good boy. Beautifully done. What a beautiful way to finish off. Lovely. He's decompressed now, so he suddenly yeah, yeah. started eating the treats again. Yeah, yeah. So. He just needed that relaxation yeah. time, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Well, um, as you can see today, um, Cal was actually very well behaved earlier and very responsive eating the food and doing everything when it was a one-on-one, -on -one. but surround him with like a whole load of dogs like he had today. And it was like a, a different ball game. He was definitely panicking. And um, one of the reasons that you can tell if a dog is panicking because it will refuse even the tastiest of treats um, because they're just that nervous that they, they don't want to have a treat. So today in this class, he, he was literally overwhelmed by the amount of dogs and it took at least half an hour to 40 minutes for him to decompress enough to actually start to take the treats off me. Um, so really to be quite honest today, it was more of a, a, a class for socialization skills for him rather than any training. Literally him just being used to being surrounded by dogs and not being nervous. So hopefully next time he, he will be a little bit better. So my conclusion for this first day of training was that Cal L is exceptionally intelligent and trainable, but suffers from huge amounts of distraction from other people and dogs. This might be his own personal phobia and not reflective of other Huskies, but generally Huskies and Nordic types are highly distracted by other dogs and prey animals. So first opinion is that I will be able to train him to a very high standard in private, but will need to tackle his outdoor phobias and his glassy eyed response to me being in noisy places with a lot happening around him. Right now, I would not be happy letting him off ever until this was under control. So I will get on and do Kamal's tasks he has set for me, but I will also concentrate on getting Cal out more in more noisy environments and meeting lots of people and dogs. If you have a Husky, please let me know in the comments below what your training experiences have been like and if you have had any success. Let me know your Husky's motivations and his distractions and what you have done to overcome any obstacles. If you would like to find out more about Kamal Fernandez and his amazing books and online training methods, then please visit his website here, www.kamalfernandezonlinetraining.com. If you live in Sussex and would like to try out Natalie Lagstrom's group puppy classes, you can find her website here www.watermillwolves.co.uk And if you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. <laughs> Bye for now.